This is TechTales number three. The TechTales is a playlist on my channel of videos where basically what I do is just describe to you work that I've done for actual billable clients. So I'm not showing, probably usually not actually showing the work, but just talking through it. These videos will be shorter than many of my videos. And it's different than my other videos because this is talking about actual billable work that I'm doing as a uh, professional computer consultant, which I've been for about 30 years. So I'm looking at some time slips on this computer over here. And the first one is a chiropractor's office. And you may have seen other videos on my channel about uh, the computer experiment with Tracy's computer. And I made a time slip note for this client. This is a billable client, but I'm not charging them for that time that I was creating a YouTube video. So I just make note of it and that that is pro bono work. Then I've got a time slip for actually returning that computer to them. I returned it to them Sunday evening, last Sunday evening. I think that was Easter, uh, 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. I have keys to the office, an alarm code, which I have to many of my clients. And I just took it back and put it in and tested it, and made some other adjustments. And at the moment, you don't know in what condition I returned that computer because I haven't yet published all of the videos of the lab work that I did on that. I was trying to get all that lab work done before I ran out of, out of time on the weekend. So then they required some editing to splice different segments together. I didn't cut out any embarrassing mistakes or um, things that didn't go right. And there were some of those. So then the next one I've got here is an, uh, an accountant's office. I have a, a phone conversation where I was reporting the status of QuickBooks Accountant Edition. And they had, they had an employee, a staff turnover last year. And that's, that CPA had a subscription to the QuickBooks Desktop Accountant Edition. And those subscription renewals were coming to his email address. So once he left, nobody realized or thought to change that that subscription. Actually, something they told me in phone conversations is they didn't think they were going to continue with it because they were going to try to get everybody, all their clients switched over to QuickBooks Online. Well, that didn't work out so well because there's a lot of offices, businesses that just aren't going to jump on the bandwagon for QuickBooks Online. And so that subscription didn't get renewed. Then they came to a point where they realized they needed it. So I had phone calls with the QuickBooks uh, sales office and back and forth trying to figure out how to uh, get it all done. And this particular time slip is just reporting to one of their staff people the status of that. That was a two minute phone call. And yes, I bill for every little thing because when I start a phone call with somebody, I never know how long it's going to go. So I put in a start time and an end time. The computer figures out the difference, automatically puts it onto their invoices. So it's no big deal. And it also tells a story. It tells a story of progression uh, through work that is done for their office. I don't round it up to a nearest increment. I don't have minimum amounts that I bill for. That's just my way of doing it and not to, s other technicians will do it other ways and that's fine. You do it what works for you. So then let's see, that was that phone call. Then here is a uh, uh, low income slash disability government subsidized housing. I know I've spoken about them before, probably in the last video. And I was speaking to their head of security, giving him some account credentials uh, that he needed for his predecessor, who was the account, the, the security department manager. He needed that, the, his predecessor's account credentials and also the account credentials for the security desk. He had asked for those through email or text and I called him back because I won't put that information into an email or a text. 
Um, I actually had to t uh, um, explain that to him because he, he didn't realize that off offhand. And I said, listen, as a security manager, you should know this. Pass usernames and passwords should never be sent over email or text. Both of those are not secure forms of communication. Then also he was having trouble with his new multifunction printer scanner device. He didn't know how to scan from it. He was trying to use the same scan procedure that he uses from their copy machine. On the copy machine, you typically punch the buttons on the copy machine and it sends the scanned image to your local hard drive or to a shared hard drive on the scanner. Either case, you go back to your computer and just launch a shortcut from, from the desktop to be able to access the scanned image. So he was trying buttons on his multifunction multifunction local printer. That's typically not the way it works with those devices. Connected with a USB cable, the scan operation begins typically from the computer screen. You launch an icon on the computer called, I think it was an HP, HP scan, and you click buttons in there to scan the image. So I connected remotely to his computer and just walked him through that process. Yeah, looking through the rest of that time slip. Yeah, then also I, I, I advised him, suggested, recommended that as security department, he ought to be initiating refresher training or reminders to the office staff and the security staff never to click on a button in an email that might not be legitimate. Don't believe what is said in the email unless it's from somebody that you expect. Basically, giving him some prompting to provide reminder training to staff in their office and the security desk about uh, avoiding phishing mails, phishing emails, and uh, buttons on websites that should not be clicked on. So then here I'm back at the CPA office that I mentioned uh, uh, in a prior time slip. Uh, this one I was conversing with one of the partners of the business. And actually, no, this wasn't a phone conversation. This was an email. They had an instance uh, in the not too recent past where they had come into the office and their software wouldn't work. Turned out that the server needed to be restarted. They called me and I walked them through restarting the server. And this one CPA partner in the CPA firm had asked me to draft an email giving them step-by-step -step instructions of how they could restart the server themselves. And so this was my time for charge for writing that email and sending it. It was a 32-minute time charge. Then prior to that, well, this is interesting, that same CPA's office, I was on a phone call with, no, no, it wasn't a phone call. It's showing 7.47 p.m. I remember this one now. 7.47 p.m. I was supposed to connect to this one CPA's computer after hours to install a software product on his computer. The arrangement was is that he would close all of his open programs. Two of the CPAs in this office are notorious for leaving tons of programs open, tons of tab, uh, browser tabs open every night, just leaving them on overnight. They just will not shut down and exit things the way a Windows computer ought to be. Uh, have all programs exited at the end of the workday so that Windows can perform maintenance overnight. I've, I've talked to them, I, I wound up giving up, and so they're, they're somewhere, somewhere down the road they're gonna have a painful morning <laughs> when they discover their computer is forcing them to do a long Windows update. Uh, but anyway, I connected to his computer 7.47 p.m. and found out he and discovered he had not closed down his, his programs. And I have learned before that when I find that to be the case, I should just walk away from it because they're not happy when I shut down their programs. 
Uh, then the next one here is a law office. It was a phone call and remote connection to one of the paralegals to fix a remote login failure. So she was at her home computer trying to connect remotely to the office and she couldn't get logged in. So I connected to her home computer remotely and said, go ahead and show me your attempt to log in. So she, she, she did that. And then I asked her, what are you typing in for your password? She told me, and I looked at my records and I said, well, the first letter of that needs to be capitalized. She said, oh, I didn't know that. Well, <laughs> I didn't argue with her, but she must be regularly typing it in as a the first letter capitalized. Otherwise, she wouldn't be able to log in. Log in. So I think it was just a matter of, of habit at her office. She probably is. Uh, I, I've had times when I ask people, what's your, what's your password? And they could say, well, it's this. I don't know what it is. It's this. My fingers just do this to log in. So I think at her office, she was unconsciously typing the capital letter and at home that little nuance didn't uh, stay with her. So there we got an 11 minute video. That's uh, good enough. I'll stop right there and we'll continue in another session. Um, what I do on my channel, it, what my intention is, is to provide free technical support to people over Zoom sessions and connecting remotely to their computers. Uh, my perception that's probably going to be mostly home users, but it's open to business too. It's open to my own clients, my own paying clients. If they're willing to come into a Zoom session, I'll connect remotely to your computer and fix whatever they need fixed for free in exchange for them coming on to a YouTube video with me. So that is available to anybody. Send me an email to dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com if you'd like to do that. Give me an idea in the body of the email which you'd like to have help with, and we'll put it together. So I hope this video has been useful for you. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.